Hi, my name is Burke Holland and welcome to this screencast on the basics of working with the Kindle UI grid. Today we're going to talk about how to configure a basic grid, how to bind that grid to some data, and how to enable features in the grid such as paging and sorting. Alright, let's get started working with the Kindle UI grid. Now to start with, I've downloaded the Kindle UI JavaScript files as well as jQuery and the Kindle UI CSS files and added them to my project already. Now the first thing that we need to do to create a grid is to either add an HTML table or an empty div. If we use an HTML table, we can specify the structure of the grid in the HTML. Here's an example of using a table. I'm using code snippets to help make things a little bit easier. And once we have that table defined and we define the column headers and the table headers, then down in our JavaScript we simply need to select that table with a jQuery selector and call the Kindle grid function. Let's check out see what we got so far. So that creates a grid for us. The other option is to use an empty div. And in the same way we can give that div an ID. But if we look at this we'll notice that the grid is there but there are no columns defined. When we use the empty div we have to define the columns using the Kindle UI JavaScript API. We do that by specifying the columns attribute on the grid and passing in an array of column objects. The column objects have a title property which will give us the column header. Alright, now that we have all our columns defined, let's have a look at our grid. Alright, that looks a whole lot better. Let's go ahead and add some data to our grid. I have a local JavaScript array that I'm going to add here just above our grid function. Now this looks like a lot of data, but this is really just an array of people objects. Each person has a first name and a last name, a URL to a picture, and an email. To bind this data to the grid is really easy. All we're going to do is specify the data source property on the grid and tell it that the data is going to be coming from our people array. That's all we need to do. Let's have a look at the grid. So we have a grid and we have a bunch of data in it, but you'll notice that all of the columns are undefined. This is because we haven't mapped our data into our grid to tell it what data to show in each column. To do that, we're going to specify the field attribute on the column object and tell it what field to get the data from. Alright, now we've defined all the fields, mapped all of the data in, let's have a look at the grid. So now we've got all of our data correctly mapped in the grid, but we do have a problem, and that is that the picture column is displaying the text of the URL to the image, and we want an image there, and the email column is displaying the email address, but it would be really nice if we could turn that into a link that people could click on to automatically send an email. We can do that using Kindle UI templates. Kindle UI becomes with a highly optimized and extremely fast templating engine. You don't have to use the Kindle UI templating engine if you don't want to. You can use whichever one you prefer and plug that in here. For this example, I'll be using the Kindle UI templating engine. The first thing we need to do is specify the template for each column. I'm going to go ahead and specify a template for the picture column. as an image and we'll set the source of the image to be the picture property in the data. Now if we have a look at our grid we should have an image where the text used to be. And we do. Perfect. Let's go ahead and apply some templates to the rest of our columns. Alright, what I've done here is added a template to each column. The first and last name will be vertically centered in the column and they'll be bold the picture we've already added and the email address will turn into a link that people can click on to open up a new email message. Let's save this and toggle back over to our grid. All right, so we have text bold centered vertically, our email addresses are now links and we have images. Great. Now, the grid extends the height of the page. Let's go ahead and set a static height on the grid. We do that simply by specifying height and we'll make it 400 pixels tall and then we're going to go ahead and set its scrollable property to true which just is going to allow people to scroll within the grid. Have a look at that and that works perfectly. Even more impressive we can add features such as paging and sorting just by toggling on simple properties. 
So I can set pageable to true. The only other thing I need to do to get paging going is to set the page size, and we'll set that to five. If we look now, we've enabled paging just like that. To enable sorting, we have two options. We can either set the sortable property to true, which will enable single column sorting. Have a look at that. And now we should be able to sort by the columns, and we can. The other option that we have is to enable multi-column sorting, and we do that simply by setting the sortable object and then setting its mode equal to multiple. And now we have multi-column sorting enabled in our grid. Lastly, let's take a look at how easy it is to add drag and drop grouping to the grid. We can set the groupable property to true, and what this will do is allow users to drag and drop columns onto a header and group by those columns. So now we can take the last name column, drag it over, and group by the last name. Very cool. So without much work, we now have a full featured grid. However, in real life, you're probably not going to be dealing with local data. You're probably going to be dealing with remote data. So let's take a look at how we can bind our grid to remote data using the Kindo UI data source. Now, for more information on how to use the data source, check out the other Kindo UI online videos and learning materials. I'm going to go ahead and delete this local JavaScript array. And what we'll do is go down and define the Kindo UI data source on the data source property of the grid. Now, the Kindo UI data source can be defined either outside of the grid or right in line on the grid's data source property. We'll do it right here in line. All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete this reference to our local JavaScript array, and I'm going to replace that by defining the transport property on the Kindle UI data source, and we will tell it what to read and where to read the data from, which is a URL. And we also need to tell it how to extract the data to show in the grid by defining the schema of our data source, what attribute contains the data. For us, that's just data. And for paging, we just tell it where to find the total count of records. That's all we need to do. We should now have remote data in our grid. Working with the Kindo UI data source, the grid continues to deliver a rich UI experience even when working with remote data. And when it's fully customized, you can even push some of these things like uh, sorting and paging up to the server for a totally optimized experience. This has only been a brief introduction to the Kindo UI grid. For more examples and features, be sure to visit the Kindo UI online demos. The Kindo UI grid is a full featured HTML5 and JavaScript grid that is easy to set up, simple to customize, and intuitive for users. We hope you have a lot of fun developing with Kindo UI.